All right, I wanted to make this really quick. Um, I'm headed up to I Ivan's today, Balabanos today for the tra trainers week weekend and excited, but I'm getting everything done and everything. But I wanted to say this be 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 because it's 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 heavy on my mind. Um, um, dogs, how to, how to have a happy dog and how not to have a miserable dog. When I get dogs to train, what I do is the first thing is I take a look at them and I look at their genetics and I look and I take a look at what, what is this dog genetically bred to do, genetically bred to love and genetically bred to not want to do and genetically bred to hate. Um, there's certain things that dogs are going to love and there's certain things that dogs are going to hate. They're individuals. There, there's certain things in breeds and in lines of breeds and all, all of that kinds of stuff. But when you get the dog in front of you, you're going to you're going to see who this dog is and what the owner wants. Is on a level irrelevant because you got something, you got a living cre creature that that has genetics to love certain things and hate other things. And you are not going to change that. And and the 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 biggest prop problem here is people want to to take a dog that hates genetically hates and and, and has real pro problems deep dealing with certain things and try to change them and force them and make that their life um this can date this dates back to to the blank slate and and radical behaviorism and how they can make anything that they want and and it's a really bad idea and it's a nightmare for dogs and it's a nightmare for people and kids too um um but so if you want a happy dog find out who the dog is what they love what they hate and tap into the things that they love and 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 funnel those focus those bring those out more and put those into things that you do with the dog attach them to things that you do with this dog and you're going to have a tremendous relationship tremendous life relationship doesn't come from giving food and this and that. it comes from that okay um conversely if you take a dog that hates people straight straight strangers and hates crowds and hates this and you're gonna every day focus on fixing that they hate strange strange dogs and they hate crowd and this kind of stuff there maybe they're introverted this and that um, and you're going to force them every day to fix this. I get pe people come to me that, yeah, you know, their dog is two, three years old. And every day they've been taking the dog out and forcing him to try to be okay in crowds, social situations, all of this kind of stuff. Now, there's, there's two things here. Most people do it incorrectly, but take a look at the dog. Who, who is that dog? I don't like crowds. I don't like strangers. It's not, I spent most of my life trying to fix myself, right? To, to, to be more of extroverted and to be that guy that, that loves the crowd. And, and, and all of a sudden I'm 54 in two or three weeks. And it took me until recently when I really understood all of this stuff to say, screw that. Man, I never changed. I, I I went out and I did it, and I hated it. Hated it. You're gonna you're gonna hate your life, right? So, don't take a dog and force them into being something they're not. I I when people come to me, and they say I want this, I want that, I want that. I really don't give a shit what what you want. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at the dog. And I'm going to tell you what's best for your dog. And you can either go with that or go with somebody else. And if you do what I say, you're going to have a tremendous, wonderful life with your dog. The dog is going to be happy as shit. And so are you because you're going to do things with the dog that the dog loves. And there are certain things certain dogs just do not want to do. They're never going to want to do them and don't do, do it. I'm not talking about not having control over your dog i i have some really aggressive dogs and stuff and they're, they're aggressive to people and the dogs and this and that i can walk them right through a crowd 
I can walk them around dogs. I can control my dogs if if that's what I have to do. You, you've seen my stuff, recalling them off of dogs and off of prey and these crazy pits and this and that. I do not go every day and force them to be around this stuff to try to change them. We go out, we play, we play chase and catch, possession games. I mean, we have a great time. And Jade likes to sniff and hunt, and but she plays possession games and chase and catch and everything. Do I go put her in front of strange dogs every single day to try to change her selectively bred genetics to not like strange dogs? Very bad idea for that dog, right? You get a, a, a shepherd. I just just had one, okay? This dog is not cool with strange dogs. I I I got it so we could walk right by people. I mean, I mean, two feet away from them, and that, and this and that. Um, I can, I can walk by dogs. I'm working with the owner now so that he can he can walk by the dogs. But why would you take this dog every day and put it into a position that it's got to it's got to deal with that? The dog hates it. Okay. There's some dogs you can change the picture. You can change it because, because who they actually are, the genetics they have are not the dog that, that hates that stuff genetically. They're, they're just, they didn't understand. See, that's a different dog. You have to know what is learned behavior and what is genetics, what you can change and what you control and guide. And this is Ivan Balabanov stuff. Everything I'm saying to you now is Ivan stuff. Um, um, so I want to I want to give the credit there. But figure out that dog, right? This dog, the shepherd, he wants to go and play chase and catch. And we go twice a day and we go to the field and he ignores people. He ignores the man. He loves that game and he lights up and he just loves it. And then we come back to the house, hang out, snuggles with me and this and that. Trying to make that dog an extroverted dog, bringing him out into crowds, into social situations and constantly putting that dog into those situations is a very, very bad idea. The dog hates it. And you're running some risk. I don't care who you are and how you train the dog. This kind of a dog who 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 really genetically doesn't doesn't like that stuff. Um, you you're just gonna constantly force force it, man. This dog, you take it out, you play ball, you wake up, you go play this ball, and the dog comes back. And, and man, that's that's what this dog wants, right? Um, you don't. You don't get to program the dog. You don't get to program your kids. You know, if you have a kid and and you you want it to play a certain sport, you want it to play football, and the kid wants to do ballet, or the kid wants to play the flute, or the kid wants to do art, whatever it is, you're going to force him for football? It happens every single day. The kid's miserable. There's resentment. There's no relationship there. Either that kid's going to love that, you, you can introduce it, and the kid loves it great. If he doesn't, man, if he wants to play the flute, ballet, art, do something, something with a purpose, and do it really well. Do it the best of your ability. And that's what you need to do with dogs. Stop taking these dogs and saying, I want this, I want that, I want, and I don't give a shit about how the dog was bred, the genetics, and, and that kinds of stuff. This is what I want. It's selfish. It's a very, very bad idea.